Hello, this is episode 15 with my brother, Kyle LeBrec, speedwalking in tracksuits with Jeremy. Let's go. Let's roll. All right, so uh, this morning, uh, this uh, first, I think it's uh, appropriate for us to talk about the fact that uh, this is our first episode that has been sponsored. <laughs> so we're making it big time, folks. Uh, this is, episode is sponsored by the Y Center, uh, which is also where we're walking. Uh, one of the best walking tracks in town, the Y in the Sky. Um, and this is, uh, we, uh, we thought it was gonna rain this morning. It looks like it might be sprinkling right now, but uh, we, we wanted to make sure that Kyle didn't get his, uh, his beautiful attire wet. I didn't want to have to reapply the fop. And when, when what, what did you say when you thought about it raining today? You thought, man, man it's why? raining. Why, why is, is it raining? raining? What better place to think about that than the why. So clearly I got my comedy from somebody else. Uh, <laughs> it was the, it was our mom's side. Uh, um, but uh, I guess it, I almost, I almost went dark there, but uh, I got to remember that uh, Kyle, you too, although you're better behaved than I, on these why episodes, we've got to keep them at least PG-15. So no bad swears, uh, no weird, dirty comments or any of that. But uh, try to keep it down but, on them. If we do, and you're editing this, Andy, just remove it if you hear it, or make a bleep or something. That'd be fun. Uh, well, that was our first. Yeah, so excited to be up here. I haven't been up, up here in a long time. Uh, I've been a member here at different uh, times in my life. Obviously not recently, given my shape, but uh, I am in a shape, just not shaped. <laughs> I'm in a shape. I think we talked about it the other day. Brennan called it hair. Um, I like fruits. Uh, I love fruits. So how are you doing? Great. Great. We, we had lunch yesterday also, so we get to hang out twice in two days. It feels, it feels weird. It's nice. We don't uh -huh. get to do that as often as we, we would like, or maybe even as much as people might think we do. Um, yeah. Being that we only live five minutes away from each other or something in the same town. But, you know, lives and family are beautiful things, and take us on their own little journeys. That's true. It's nice we have this trek all to ourselves this morning. I, I have a feeling that it's pretty, this, this trek is a really underutilized asset that uh, could get more attention. I yeah. kind of like that it's quiet up here. It's nice, and I, I didn't even realize it was up here. Um, I think I mentioned that to you when we were walking up. But, and also, what a, what a cool place, potentially, I don't know, don't, don't, uh, you know, get after me, Jill, but this could be a great space for the Battle Creek serial killers to potentially practice. I don't now, think I don't... they're called the serial killers oh, anymore. Oh, they're not the serial no. The Battle Creek, Battle uh, Creek Roller, Roller Derby. Derby team. Sorry, the serial killers were the, the but, team that Jeremy and I started uh, over a decade ago, like 12 This is 12 like the, um, if we were WWF, they are like WWE. Right. Or right. WCW. Much more, maybe much more organized and professional. More advanced. Yeah. Less... Absolutely. Less idiocy. Yeah. Um, probably. They, they have an opportunity for some minor bank track up here because there's... I know. There's it's a, kind of fun. Yeah, well, maybe a 15-degree incline on the, on the corners here. I hadn't thought about that. This would be a cool little spot for bouts. Yeah, or a little... Whatever, yeah. Even practices, but I wonder if it's... It's probably not the right size, though. Yeah. It's probably, like, oddly, you know, not the right dimensions for that court, but huh, who knows? Not who's to say? A, who's to say? Who's to say, really? It's not Woofta regulation, but the word on the street is that Woofta is kind of not all that uh, utilized or um, the uh, Anymore? main governing body. What's, what, what is this Woofta thing you're talking Woofta, about for, the, uh, for our fan? Yeah, that's a good, yeah. It is the uh, Women's Flat Track uh, Roller der or Derby Association, I believe. I yep. just don't put me on that exactly but that's uh, correct and that was the uh i believe roughly governing body um uh, kind of that kind of set the rules and parameters for women's roller derby across the country and stayed you know made some very outlined rules and such as it had to be 51 percent owner um women owned excuse me and there were certain you know track distances that i don't remember the the track had to be so so wide, which this actually I think is maybe a little narrow, too narrow. I wonder, um, I wonder why they don't, why that's not 
the prominent organization anymore. I don't, I don't know. I was just uh, having a brief chat with Rachel the other day, and, and uh, actually when we were at New Holland Brewing for their soft opening. Nice. Um, yeah, Rachel, uh, Rachel Ostrander is the person starting uh, Battle Creek Roller Derby. She was uh, on the serial killers team after, after we left and uh, transferred ownership to the uh, captains. Uh, and I think I'm walking with her next week. I'm also walking with Betty Rage, I think, next weekend or a couple weekends from now. She's kind of exciting. Betty Rage, Erica Rose, Erica Rose is, uh, um, was, uh, well, one of my favorite derby people back in the day, just our, one Maybe of our one homies. Got, you know, one of, one of the yeah, I mean, we got closest I don't want to say favorite. Well, yeah, I do. Fuck it. Oh, pardon. Oh, oh shit. Sorry, why? <laughs> <laughs> beep, 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 beep. That that curse word is not sponsored by the Y Center. No, it is not. Uh, we're keep, good, nobody's up here though, so we haven't offended anybody yet. Yes. Yeah, I got to work on my potty mouth. I was at the uh, I was at the North Penn PTO meeting last night. Parent teach. It's a lot of acronyms in this uh, episode. Parent teacher organization for all you degenerate parents who don't know what that means. <laughs> um, and if you don't, and you have kids, join your PTOs. Because nobody really does, and there's always like one or two people that do all the work. And at the North Penn PTO, that's Crystal Newman and Stacy Neiman, and uh, um, now Angina Schwartz uh, is there. And I went there to talk about their greenhouse yesterday, and now I can't even remember why we were talking about. Uh, oh, yes, and Erin had to remind me several times, even though I never misbehaved, she had to remind me that I was in an elementary school library, and so I better watch my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, frankly, you're, you're probably lucky that they, they haven't put a restriction on how close you can get to those places. <laughs> but, uh, but we'll leave that uh, for another episode. Despite what people might think, um, I've never been arrested uh, yet is the probably the key. We'll I'm sure there's a lot of cases on me. Uh, we'll just leave that at that. <laughs> they're trying to build a case, <laughs> putting together mounting evidence. <laughs> no, but I, I too. No, you, we'll just leave that at that. <laughs> <laughs> I too have uh, have had a new uh, found um, restriction for my language as well. Why is that? Um, because of my daughter is now 16 months old and she is starting to repeat everything. My daughter Corinne. That's awesome. And uh, so yeah, that's my niece. And so she's been just chatting up a storm every morning. It's quite fun we have our little morning conversations on the oh, way to school now that's great and do you are you the are you the taker to school yeah, yeah i was i was also the taker to daycare and until maggie went to elementary school where her mommy works and now i've lost those those mornings we used to listen to rap music and just laugh about ridiculous things we had our own little inside jokes we still do but i miss those mornings kind of looking forward to maggie going to uh the next school, Dunlap, next year, because I think maybe I'll get to give her rides Is that, more. So third, third grade. Third, yeah. Starts with third. Third, fourth, fifth. That's how Penfield splits up their, their buildings. Um, well, that's something that I, not, you know, I guess didn't know or was familiar with that Penfield did that, but um, it's kind of something new and, and uh, interesting. Not new necessarily to them, but new for me to, to know or learn. But yeah, they have two elementaries that are K through two, and then uh, one singular three, three, four, five building, and then a junior high where they all go to next, and or a middle school maybe they call it. Um, mine was called a junior high. Was Lakeview called junior high or middle school when you went? You know, that's a good question. We had always called it the junior high, but officially, I'm not sure. I think it's officially called the middle school, which so. is yeah. my former high school. My former high school as well. I was there the last year. So the following year, which would have been the 06 graduates, I graduated in 05, they had half of their year at the old high school and half at the new. Hmm. I guess, I assume that's because of construction and all that. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're actually, I think they're doing that with Penfield this year, uh, eighth graders. Next year, if you're in eighth grade, you're actually going to go to high school because they have to fix that, that side of the building. Oh. And my good buddy Everett across the street, I, I, I feel bad kind of. I was teasing him because he doesn't get to be the king of the junior high as an eighth oh. grader. He gets to, has to skip his king year 
to now go and get swirlies. Yeah, see, and that's, man, that's a no. pivotal year of building confidence, I feel like. Yeah. You Being get to, able to puff your yeah. chest a little as, you know, yeah. You get to be the chiefs pretty. of the school, and then you get to go and get corrected for a couple years. Uh, where did you ever get a swirly in school? I can't say in school. Um, did you, in, wait, you got a swirly in, in real life? Infrequently in by... Um, my brother. I never gave you a swirly. He would babysit. No, he wouldn't. No, no, no swirly. I, I just, did get locked in the closet a couple of times and threatened to be fed fiber. So. <laughs> I didn't and even know what that meant, <laughs> let alone it, you. It, it makes so much sense now. I had no clue at the time why that would mean anything bad, but now um, I have nightmares <laughs> about what that could mean. Um, what was the name of the babysitter that I said I was going to have babysit you? Big Bertha. Big Bertha, Big yeah. Bertha. You were so, Big Bertha, come sit on you. You were so terrified of Big Bertha. <laughs> that was over at our, at our second, well, the second house that I lived in. And it Cambridge? It would have been, no, no, Kirkpatrick. Oh, yeah, you lived in Acacia, I forgot. Just Duh. for a, maybe six months, a year, maybe? No, I think. I don't know. We moved when you were four because you rode your, I remember we, you and I both rode our bikes from Acacia to Kirkpatrick when oh. we moved and you could ride your bike okay. and you had just learned how to ride your bike several years ahead of me uh, at four, I think I was 14, 13, 14. And I always we, mix it up. We moved over the, there. The timeline, I think, because we spent probably the least amount of time at um, Kirkpatrick. Yeah, house. and it, it was one of the most like, formative. Yeah, it, it feels like one of the, the longer periods of time. We had a little pool at the time. Yeah, that pool was great. I wore my swim trunks to elementary school, <laughs> which was right across the street once. That way I didn't even have to change when I came home. I just took my, my, my jeans or whatever I had on and jumped right in the pool. And, you know, obviously that's just... Silly, but. I remember, I think it might have been the one time that I had some girls to come over to the pool um, that uh, Randi came out in his Speedo flexing. <laughs> I was so embarrassed. And thinking back, I think either, there's two, there's really two things that could have happened there. Either he was really, I gotta ask him, either he was really serious about the Speedo or he was trying to embarrass the hell out of me. Uh, I like to believe number two. I do too. But if he was really serious about the speedo, and I feel like it's 50-50, it could it go really either could, way. It could be 50-50. You never know with that could character. Because that is totally <clears throat> something that that whole generation would have worn. Right there. I, and you know, he's always been a little late to the party, so you know the speedos went out in the in the late 80s, but that was, we were in totally 90s territory by then probably. I mean, oh yes, we were. It was like 92. Yeah. Just, just hugging the skin. <laughs> and I was already sort of Awkward around and everybody. <laughs> I was waiting for that around. Uh, <laughs> Speaking um, of speedos, uh, you know, with this with this um, Y sponsorship, uh, I've agreed to do some other uh, because I'm so sporting. Uh, they've asked me, you know, as a representative of the sporting community, to uh, uh, maybe do some other type videos at the Y, like. Um, like intro to pickleball for swimming in speedos with Jeremy. That's a and good yes, one. and pickleball was actually one of the requested uh, things. Pickleball with Jeremy. I think that we got to come up with some good pickleball and alliteration. Moomoo's. Yes, pickleball and moo moos. Yeah. Okay. All right. I don't know. There's no pickleball and pur- right? pickleball and purple pants. Pickleball and purple pants. Swimming in speedos with Jeremy. I feel like there's a lot of uh, we're gonna really go far with this. Pantless pickleball. Uh, I don't Ooh. know. Huh. Huh. I think that's PG <laughs> more than 14, uh, especially with these thighs. Although after after working out at the Y, I hope to have I hope to achieve thigh gap. That's really my like my number one goal because I haven't grown hair on my inner thighs in a decade. Just rubs away. You have a you have stock in, in Johnson and Johnson <laughs> for the baby powder. Yeah. Of the... No, that's talcum. That's oh, talcum. Poppycock. I wouldn't use that. Okay. That's really horrible for the skin, and I'm all about my skin regimen, as can be evidenced I was by not, looking at me. Yes, yes. I, I'm, I agree that your skin is beautiful. <laughs> it's something. I have to get some face lotion. So what was it like growing up with uh, me as your big brother? I always wonder, uh, you know, it was knowing how cool I am, that I thought, geez Louise. You know, 
I could say a million of goofy, funny things right now, but honestly, it, um, you know, I really looked up to you and, and, and thought that, you know, all the adventures that I half probably made up in my head and the other half were fabricated stories told by you. Um, but I always just was like wanted to be with you and your friends going on whatever adventure you were going on. And, um, you know, and you taught me about fort building, which was a formative part of uh, the adventures that me and my friends would, would take and go on in the woods. And, you hear that, Maggie? And, uh, I'm a fort building expert. Yep. Don't question it. And uh, tree forts and blanket forts. That's, that's where I got some of my, um, uh, you know, amateur skills in that, in that space. But I feel like I talked about... Um, fort building on a recent episode with Tony Dewey maybe uh, specifically what I, I learned something new uh, I, I've leveled up my fort building game indoor fort building game with sheets with Maggie uh, chip clips I gotta tell you chip clips. this is how you keep the sheets in place and taut chip uh, clips. it's really how you make an amazing uh, just an amazing interior fort with sheets and towels and we have really Chip firm clips. couch cushions, yes. so they hold up really oh, well. Oh, that's nice. Has, have you been building, building forts with No, not, yet. not, not no. so much yet. You did, I think Maggie did one. Yeah, did some yeah, with you. Oh, yeah. yeah. I've, I've built a few with Maggie. But, um, no, I mean, and just I think just your passion for adventure, um, which has carried on with me and certainly you still. Um, uh, you know, if I, had, if I had been a huge Star Wars fan, I would have followed Yoda's advice. Excitement, adventure, a Jedi craves not these things. <laughs> <laughs> That's and clearly I'm not a Jedi. Did I? Did I? I am. I taught you karate. Kung Fu. Kung, well, Kung Fu. Yes, the the technical okay. name. Uh, but, you you know, thought every, I you every, thought I knew karate, didn't you? The, well, the, the third <laughs> Thursday of every month is when you get your. <laughs> Kung Fu lessons, right? Yeah, yes. I did, I did that for you from, from a formative age. We, we taught you how to paint the fence, paint Wax the house. The <laughs> now, had I been less silly, I would have taught you Kung Fu, but like water the plants, vacuum the carpets. <laughs> mow the yard, mow the grass. But I wasn't that clever yet. I have only became this clever over time. You know, the one thing, though, that you did not teach me as well, and we don't have to dive into this too deep here. But, what didn't I do as a brother? Um, is, is the art of not... Um, Shutting the hell up? No. <laughs> <laughs> not getting caught. Oh. You're trying to do things. Yeah. And maybe a little bit borderline, you know... Mis misbehavior? Misbehavior. Or so, wait, wait, are you saying that I got caught doing things and I should have I should have not or no, rather no, I'm saying you you seemingly never got caught doing anything and were a little angel <laughs> as a child and every little misstep that I made I got caught doing and was chastised we used to say that every time every time Kyle farted he, somebody was watching and taking notes <laughs> no I just wasn't as, as smart and conniving. And, <laughs> conniving. Uh, I'm just kidding. That's great. I, I'll agree with the smart one, though. <laughs> no, let's, it's let's really hard honest. to achieve this level of intellect. The, the bulk of, of the reality is just our parents were older and paying attention more. Yes. I was being, you know, in my, in my years of, of semi-rebellion. And so... Yeah, I mean, Mom was uh, 30 when you were born, and I was 9. Uh, now... I know I was not fit to be having any kids at 19 or 30, and uh, I didn't even have, we didn't even have Maggie until I was 38. That's the same age that mom was when I went to college. Yeah, that is. <laughs> That's when I started, and uh, rightfully so. I was not mature enough in my 20s, 30s, or tomorrow <laughs> to, be, to be raising children. Luckily, I have a, a lovely partner who is just a much better parent overall. Amen to that. I think we, we share that in common. 
Um, For sure. But we, we like to bring the silly, the both of us. Uh, well, I, I wish you luck in not swearing in front of Corinne. Um, it's a lifelong battle for me. And in fact, <laughs> we let Maggie swear at home. Uh, just get it all out at home. This is the place you're allowed. And it's a, my, uh, my parenting, um, our parenting motto is uh, there are different rules everywhere you go in the world. And you better figure that out if you want to survive because you'll be... Uh, ostracized if you're not following the rules in certain situations. Maybe you're okay with that, um, but be ready for it. Or learn to be a chameleon sometimes and follow the rules in different places. And, you know, there's, there's law, and then there are just rules and procedures and policies. And uh, I also heard something like, uh, if your kid behaves out in public, misbehaves. but misbehaves at home, then you're doing something right because they're comfortable they're comfortable kind of testing things out and, and being themselves at home and I, I, heard, and I heard something similar recently from a uh, it was a podcast I believe um, a gentleman said you know he was actually had his daughter on his podcast and she was probably I don't know 10 something in that, that neighborhood but um, he said there's differences between um, punishments and consequences and this I forget the scenario but basically he said that you know his um, his daughter is going to have a consequence at school because of what her actions were but because she you know told him ahead of time was completely honest and it was within a certain kind of set of principles that she was not going to have any punishment at, at home, home. Because she was honest and followed there. And talked about it. And talked about it. And basically, it's about building trust with your kids. Well, and also, doing yeah. what you're, you know, doing what you're following through and doing what you say you're going to do. And well, like home is a safe place. You can, is, exactly. you can, let's be yourself. Let's talk. Let's talk through some things. Uh, don't get too overly excited, you know, people with the word safe place. I don't want to get anybody's speedo in a bunch. Uh, I think everybody wants there to be. Uh, uh, safe environments to raise children. And if they don't, then uh, well, they're dirt bags. <laughs> I think the other, I mean, and I'm learning something new about being a parent every day, and it's, it's an amazing journey, and I think it's everyone's, probably everybody who has kids is still learning, um, even if they have adult children. But um, is, we're, we're starting to explore and think about how we're going to. Um, have a conversation and relationship around, you know, being open with our feelings and, and, and talking about them and expressing them and that that's okay, regard, basically regardless of what those feelings are as long as they're expressed in you know, an appropriate manner. And, and I think so much of our society over time has gotten closed in, at least I know speaking for me, you know, I kind of, wherever it came from was kind of taught that, you know, it's not, we kind of hide our feelings and we we don't cry as guys or whatever. And I think that's all uh, poppycock. I think we, the more we are open and sharing of our feelings and communicative of those, the better the world will be. I agree 100%. I think, uh, I know, I was raised at a time and people raised previously and even, you know, when you were raised that uh, uh, people were a lot less uh, open about talking to each other and just, uh, you know, talking things out and some people are tough guys and they think that's nonsense and we don't need to be talking about our feelings and uh well i'm sorry for those people that must yeah you know, it must really suck maybe it to, works for them to be bottled in but um i highly I, unlike it. i don't think so i think everybody talks they're just you know they're just talking to themselves and they're not getting it out and maybe you know maybe that's that's the case i think if you if you uh just are open and honest to yourself about your own feelings um, I think we would, we would live in a, a lot more honest world. Uh, and, uh, yeah, this is getting really serious. Yeah. This is way less silly than it's supposed to be. <laughs> this PG-14 stuff is hard. <laughs> well, I'm sure this will be full of innuendo regardless. Well, what's the remainder of, of your day filled with? You'd mentioned... 
you have an, a meeting in the next town, two towns over. Oh, no, I don't. Oh, um, I, I, uh, I moved that. I got, I, got, I got moved to a phone call another day. Um, so I have a... Actually, I have a day back home of uh, working on some proposals and uh, preparing some invoices and doing some consulting work and uh, working on uh, reviewing uh, some Sprout co-op documents uh, for building agreements and... Sprout, by the way, Sprout Co-op memberships are still open for purchase. Yes, they are. They will always be open for purchase. A Sprout membership, uh, so what is the Sprout Co-op? Sprout Co-op, don't worry about the word co-op unless you love them and you know what they are. Don't let it distract you. It's a, it's a retail food location. We are going to be a small market. And you don't need to be a member. To no. Shop, yes, right? membership is more like uh, it's community ownership. So you become an owner of the store uh, you you have an owner share everybody who's a member uh, has one share there's unlimited amount of shares possible this is not like the stock market this is how cooperatives operate and with that share you get some decision making power get to vote board of directors on in the future you get, uh, you get to be in the know yes you get to be in the know you get to you know maybe have a little discount here or there on and some products yes. you get you get there's volunteering opportunities for discounts so maybe go. we need help uh packaging bulk uh, cashews uh, into smaller grab-and-go bags, or maybe we need help uh, uh, facing products and stocking and uh, cutting the cheese. <laughs> I used to be a, a big-time cheese cutter. Actually, most of my life I've been a cheese cutter. But, uh, um, yeah, we're going to have... It's kind of exciting because the uh, big vision concept is starting to narrow down and... Uh, get into the details and into the weeds and while I'm more of a big vision guy uh, I'm excited for some of the details like uh, we're talking about this bowls concept uh, so while it'll be a fresh market with organic staples and local things grown from farmers and local um, value-added food products made by food entrepreneurs we're also going to have a cafe and a, and a prepared foods section uh, which will be made to order, grab and go, ready to go, ready to take. Uh, mostly it's gonna be a bowls concept. So the concept is... Um, like a poke bowl or a, a quinoa yeah, yep. rice. Quinoa, rice, whatever. grain, green, Vegan soup, options, salad. Soups. So, um, no soup for you. Yeah, we're still looking for a name. We're probably gonna hire some brand consultants at some point to, to come up with a a good amount of names. We've been doing some crowdsourcing on social media. Um, we can't use the name Sprout, or we're not going to because it's a potential trademark uh, issue in the future for the Sprouts farmers markets that exist all over the South and Southwest. And uh, we don't really want to use the word co-op as a public facing word because it's confusing to people and, and there's, there's really no reason to confuse people. Um, we will, you know, use the opportunity to educate people about what cooperative businesses are because I think uh, cooperative businesses are a part of the future, especially for towns that maybe don't recruit um, big corporations very well or maybe they're not attractive to, to larger corporations for whatever you know, number of reasons. Well, we need to, you know, build our economy from the inside. And what, I mean, what a better, I mean... I think people are yearning for options, not only in grocery, but just lunch options, you know, and, and how cool that you're able to repurpose a historic space in downtown Battle Creek, you know, right in the corner of Carlisle and, and West Michigan there in the Radnor building. No, it's uh, a, actually, it's the old Anson building. Anson Rad building, you know, the Radnor. You're talking Rad Eye. Rad Eye building is down Next the road. Door? Yeah, yeah. Next uh -huh. door. So I get those confused because friends of ours, uh, we do multiple things with and and so anyway, the Anson building. Yeah. Yes, I'm antsy for the Sprout Co-op <laughs> to get to get opened up. Um, we were considering using the Anson name, but it's kind of bland. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The Anson was a it was a it was called the Anson Hotel, but it was really kind of a in, in the end in the '90s even. So as recently as 30 years ago, it was like a boarding house or a flop house. And so there's lots of apartment type spaces upstairs in the um, 
uh, our de the developer of the space for Sprout is also developing, I think, I might misspeak, but low to moderate income housing above Sprout, which cool. I think will be awesome. Uh, a, some built-in customers, but also a built-in amenity for those, uh, those who live there to have you know, local, a little local, lo local fresh market and uh, um, a brewery right there and uh, Torty Taco. And I think downtown is, I think in about five years, it'll be... It's shaping it'll up be, nicely. It'll be back where, where we want it. Uh, New Holland just opened up. That's exciting. Uh, great place. We, uh, we went there as a family together on Monday. Uh, not yesterday, but a week ago. Um, yeah. In fact, I'm st I still have to train my mind that that's like a lunch option. An option, yeah. We, we went to lunch downtown, and I forgot yesterday. <clears throat> I think, you know, I've been waiting for it for so long, but... Uh, great gluten-free pizzas option in Battle Creek, which I found few are few and far between. And yeah. so if you're... If, if you're gluten free and they're um, not just a brewery i think that's needs to be known is that they make their own liquors and uh, you don't have to go there and drink either if that's not your jam but plenty of plenty of non-alcoholic concoctions as well um infusions and such so it's it's cool it's a really cool neat inspiring place that has um a kind of an open concept but it's has the, the it looks like the option to com be compartmentalized for like smaller uh, business meetings or, or Chris, like, uh, family or work Christmas party options. So really excited for, for to use that space. And then the back uh, patio too, that has big heaters for when it gets a little chilly in the early spring or late fall. Yeah, that's um, awesome. I'm excited for that space yeah. uh, as well. No, that's really great. We've got two breweries downtown. So, uh, you know, we used to love the, that other brewery that used to be downtown. Um, and spent a lot of time there, and and man, do I miss it! Um, but uh, I'm glad we have, you know, well, technically we have three breweries in town now. All this ter territorial, territorial being the long, longest existing. Uh, they're Great friends of ours. Go yes. check out their German-inspired uh, lagers and different drinks, and, and great German-inspired food, and home of the out only outdoor battle axe axe throwing club in battle creek now there's another one there's an indoor one also owned by battle axe at the beamery but we'll uh, yeah so we're uh axe throwing league starts on april 13th uh at territorial brewing company this year uh i didn't mention them as a brewery in battle creek because they're in springfield and they're i love that they're very much like hey no we're in springfield like they right they they own that that's a different city within our city uh, you know, kind of within the geography of our city, wrap our arms. I like to think that Battle Creek just gives Springfield a big old hug. Big old hug, big old bear and, hug. Uh, and that's perfect for Charles and Tim and Chelsea and, and, and their team because they are just awesome people. And did you know, I know you knew, they just hired Josh Davies, former brewer from Arcadia. Not. He just moved back uh, into the area from Pennsylvania, and he is now their head brewer, and he's making some delicious IPAs. So they're even uh, venturing into the wow. into the ales uh, more and more. Well, uh, sorry be... if we misspeak about anything about beer. Uh, we're just novice, uh, former beer connoisseurs. Yeah, it would be nice to have Josh back in the area. I did not know that. I know that he's got a lot of friends in the area that are going to be happy that he's back. So. Yeah. He was, Cheers, Josh. He was one of the founders of the Battle Creek Metropolitan Area Mustache Society. That's right. One of the joint chiefs of stash. That's right. Well, hey, uh, this is our last lap. We've, we've gone over time again, um, and, uh, but that's okay. Andy can fix that. It's been, <laughs> yes, there's a lot to cut here. A lot of Kyle's content is pretty much weak. <laughs> <laughs> so if you just make it about me again, that'd be great. <laughs> the last video, shorts you can put a that he filter did. On me, there's, there's a couple short videos where I feel like Andy's having fun just making like it's all my own <laughs> and other people laughing. Thank you, Mike Common. <laughs> he did a, uh, we're gonna do one more lap for fun. He okay. did a, uh, we're starting to getting a little bit perspire murky. here. He did a, uh, he, he, did, he did a short video of the speed walking uh, video with me and Brennan Bowden. And uh, I was talking about Andy in the video and how he, you know, 
might have moved here moved, moved here he's not from here but he moved here just before I came back into town and and uh, um, and I just asked Andy in the video like so when was that uh, Andy and then Brennan says uh, wouldn't it be fun if like in the edited video Andy was like the voice of God and it just said 2016 and I was like there you go Andy there's your challenge for the day so in the edited video <laughs> he does it and it's great <laughs> that's awesome 2004 I'm uh, waiting for them all edited versions to be out on YouTube, and I'm just going to binge them. There's uh, currently 14 shorts I, I know. on YouTube and 14 full episodes. I'm just waiting for all of them. Uh, season one is almost over. Uh, we're done with our walk for today. I don't know when season... I think season one will be done on April 15th, and we'll start season two. Uh, right. Thank you for uh, joining me, Kyle. Uh, have a great day, and uh, love you, buddy. Love you, too, brother. Oh, will you come back on season three? I don't even get invited to season two. I'm, we'll see. Okay. We'll see how the yeah, we'll see how we'll see how the likes, <laughs> the likes and the followers we get from this video. All right, love you. Cheers. Bye.